أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم dear viewers and welcome to the show reflections where we discuss a particular verse from the holy Quran or a hadith from the Aima عليهم السلام today we'll be discussing verse number 185 from سورة البقرة it says بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان it is a very popular verse when it comes to uh, understanding the holy month of Ramadan or getting the direction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about this month and what it is for and, the imp and its importance. Today we'll, we have uh, Sayyid Arif Rizwi who um, we welcome once again. Sayyid Arif, welcome again. Assalamu alaikum. And uh, we'll be hopefully expanding on this verse and saying what what the message is within this verse the holy month of <coughs> Ramadan is known to be one of uh, around the world of fasting and also by many for feasting as well in the evening time once the fast is broken and uh, as well as a lot of uh, ritual prayers invitations to guests and um, and a more uh, tenderness of the heart due to the process of fasting and uh, we we have all of us tend to have a common understanding of what the holy month is all about um, but Sayyid Arif what can you uh, can you help us to understand better what is the the real philosophy of this month uh, especially in relation to the verse that we mentioned Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim as you said that uh, the holy month of Ramadan is one of the most prestigious gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the believers and there prevails a certain common understanding about this month amongst the Muslims and, and it is that common understanding by virtue of which we can see people fasting and performing certain rituals related to the holy month of Ramadan. But definitely there lies a deep philosophy behind this month and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is that he did not even leave that to us to recognize and understand the philosophy of the month of Ramadan. He explicitly expressed it in his holy book about why, what is the significance of this month of, of, month of Ramadan and what is the core behind it and how you are going to, what you need to achieve out of this month. The common understanding and the most significant element of Ramadan which is seen amongst the masses is about uh, Siyam which is fasting. People remember this holy month as a month of fasting and moment the month of Ramadan comes up or is about to come near, the first thing which comes in someone's mind is about fasting. The Mizdaq which is a reference for Ramadan is, uh, is fasting. Ramadan means fasting mm -hmm. for uh, many of us. And definitely fasting plays a vital role in this month of Ramadan, there is no doubt about it. But the significance of Ramadan with the Quran itself says in this verse which you refer to, Shahr Ramadan, Allazi unzila fihi al-Quran, hudal linnaas bayyinaat min al-Khuda wal-Furqan. The first uh, part of this verse itself says that this is the month of Ramadan in which we descended the Quran. And why do we descend the Quran? What is this Quran? itself Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala itself expresses and says it is hudal linnas it's a guidance for humanity for mankind and he talks about two more dimensions of this Quran which are specifically for this month in this particular verse let us first try to understand this part itself that what is meant by unzila what is meant by nuzul of Quran then we would be able to better understand and gauge like what is the significance of this month the Quran is not telling that Shahr Ramazan, the month of Ramazan is a month of fasting. Mm -hmm. It starts with Quran. That too dissension of Quran. It is not telling, the verse is not telling Shahr Ramazan, Allazi Quran means this is the month of Quran. Mm -hmm. Which means you can do whatever you want to do with the Quran. Right. You can recite Quran, you can memorize Quran, you can distribute Quran, you can do all these things. But it specifically says a month of descent of Quran. Mm -hmm. 
Now, we have an understanding of descent of Quran that the Quran descended on the Holy Prophet, but it did not descend in this month. It took 23 years for the Quran right, to right. come in step by step in different verses, came in different locations, different mm -hmm. occasions. But again, Quran specifically says that this is a month of descent of Quran. So, what is the meaning of descent? Now, in Arabic, Nuzul means something which is at a higher level to come down to a lower level. Nuzul could be in the domain of space, whereby something is at a higher height, a height and it comes down to a lower yeah. height. Again, the mafhum remains still the same, like <clears throat> if something is at a height, like where your hands cannot reach, it comes down and becomes accessible to you, that is Nuzul. It, is, it was at a higher position, it came down to a lower position. Or in the time domain also, something was far and it came near to you in time, like mm -hmm. the time of Maghrib is far now, but after few hours it will be near. It has descended, it is the Nuzul right. of Maghrib. But here, when it comes to the divine meanings which are expressed, Nuzul means the same, something which was at a higher level, not accessible to Nas, to mm. mankind, becomes accessible to mankind. So, did it descend from the Ummul Kitab or where, what is the source? The source is Ummul Kitab, which is uh, Lohi Mahfuz, where the mm. Quran is there. Now, again, Quran in our mind is the piece of paper and the book which we have, right. which is not that the case. Quran is the science of Allah, the mm -hmm. ayat of Allah. It was not in a book form where it was sealed somewhere in a treasure like a treasure and then Allah sent it down. No. Right. These were the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which were in Alam al Malkut. Mm -hmm. And then it came down into Alam al Mulk, which is the materialistic world where human being is. Now, when it is coming to the Alam al Mulk, which is the world in which human being is living, if the Quran comes in the same form, which is in the language of Malakot, people are not going to understand. Hmm. And even to this extent, the Quran says that we have descended the Quran in Arabic, so that you can understand. Right. Which means the entire emphasis is revolving around Fahmul Quran, which is understanding of the Quran. Hmm. Descend means bringing the Quran down to that level at which human being should be able to understand, understand it. Right. That is what is descent. So, Quran in this verse is telling Shahr al-Ramazan, Alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. This is the month in which we have made the Quran understandable to you. Mm -hmm. It has come down to the level by which you can understand it. Right. Now, it doesn't mean that after this month you will not be able to understand it. No. You will still be able to understand even in other months. But why specifically in this month? Right. That's my question. Why yes. did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose this particular month? Yes. This, this, this particular month, Allah has laid down certain etiquettes of this month. And Allah refers to it that this month you are my guest. Mm -hmm. Allah is the host this month. And Allah is inviting us to His dining mat in this month. And that dining mat, the food which Allah is serving in this month is Quran. Is Quran. He's inviting to watch the Quran. But to understand the Quran, there are certain prerequisites which need to be met. Not everyone can understand the Quran. Like the Quran says that no one can touch it except the purified. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we don't want to go into that discussion now. What is the meaning of purified over here? But it's very clear that to understand the Quran, you need to meet certain essential requirements of understanding. There are different levels of understanding. Mm -hmm. One level of understanding is for mankind, where Quran says, La ilaha illallah, anyone can understand the message of the Quran about it. Right. But there are different levels. And to, to traverse those levels of Quran and reach the peak of understanding of Quran, you need to meet certain criteria in your own self. And one of the essential criteria is piety, taqwa, which means purification of your self. Mm -hmm. And taqwa only comes when you refrain from certain things which are not permitted, which are prohibited and perform your obligatory acts. Now, obligatory acts are something which people are performing. The challenge is in refrainment from things which are haram. Mm -hmm. Like there is a hadith in Hadith Al-Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the reward for fasting is my essence itself. The reward for fasting Allah is not telling it's Jannat, it is this, it is that. It's telling it's me, myself. Right. When you fast, you get me. Mm -hmm. Why? What is the reason? Why Allah is not telling reward for Salat is me, or reward for Dua is mm -hmm. me, or reward for other wajibat is me. He says, no, right. for fasting the reward is for me. Why? Because fasting is an exclusive act which is done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You might ask someone, you might, first of all you will not know 
whether someone is fasting or not unless he tells salat you know you can see him doing salat but right. when it comes to fasting unless he say fine we assume that it's a month of ramadan with husne zan that every muslim He's you know fasting. is fasting but he might be fasting just to show you he might go inside his room and he can eat right yes he can do it but that is where if he's really if he's fasting for the sake of allah is not going to break his fast even if he's even if he is in isolation yes. which means be this act act carries an carries an amount of or you can say at least certain degree of sincerity by the person who is fasting right. there is an element of exclusivity for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is present in fasting but what is what is it about refraining from food from the sunrise to sunset exactly that, that allows one to gain this exclusive yes. exclusiveness fasting is not just refraining yourself from haram acts mm-hmm. haram acts are prohibited in any situation every whether day, you are yes. every every day whether you are right. fasting or not fasting refraining from things which are halal and which are also your day to day needs essential essentials yeah. you are you are eating food other things which are day to day essentials mm-hmm. by refraining from that it clearly shows that you are doing this for the sake of allah there is a level of hope mm-hmm. love for allah which is present inside your heart right. for which you are doing this and you are maintaining that throughout the day even in isolation fasting gives you that acceleration in terms of self restraint and self control mm. which then we should inshallah prevail throughout the 11 months where you are not prohibiting yourself from halal but at least if you are for 30 days in a month if you are refraining mm. from halal then you will be refraining from haram also and refraining from haram in the other months itself is piety mm. you are going you are trying to achieve the peak of taqwa by refraining from those things which are halal mm-hmm. just on the instruction of allah just on the hukum of allah mm-hmm. because it's the order of allah you are refraining from halal things also which are made by allah and the need and the instincts for having those things are also kept by allah subhanahu wa taala so you are suppressing it this is one of the reasons of one of the philosophies of fasting that mm-hmm. it develops taqwa and unless you develop taqwa you cannot get the ma'rifat of quran you cannot understand the quran hmm. and quran at many places talks about that only those who are muttaqun they yes. they they will be able to understand the quran they will be able to get to the meanings of the quran right. they are going to pay attention to what we are telling and what we are referring over here hmm. so fasting is developing a high element high degree of taqwa inside you which opens the doors of understanding of quran as the verse itself says plus there are other uh, benefits of fasting also not benefits the philosophies of fasting mm. like you are getting the sense of realization like there are many things which you will not be able to feel it unless you are really into it right. like if 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 someone is telling i am having a headache fine you might be sympathetic with him that he is having a headache you can see his pain hmm. you know what is the pain but unless you yourself suffer from a suffer from a headache hmm. you will not be able to uh, understand what he is going through right. it okay. and when you have also gone through it then you will be more sympathetic towards him so you are feeling the pain of hunger and thirst which should make you realize two things one is the pain and hunger for the mustazafin mm-hmm. those who are down trodden in the world those who are victims of oppression and imperialism because of which they don't even get their daily bread and butter you get the feeling of that and second thing is which aima alaihi wasallam says is by fasting you should be able to realize the starvation the hunger and the thirst which you will have on the day of qiyamah when you will be halted for a long time mm-hmm. you should get a feel of that how it will be on that day when i would be in this particular position waiting for my turn to answer what i have i have done if i have done everything good then i will be walk through like with noor over there but if i have not then this is one realization which we get mm-hmm. but fasting is an etiquette of ramzan it's amongst the adab of ramzan it's not the philosophy of ramzan mm-hmm. but unfortunately the common norm is that ram fasting has become the philosophy of ramzan no mm-hmm. fasting is that etiquette that ladder which we have to walk on step on to reach and understand what the quran is telling and the verse specifically says hudal lin nas <coughs> hudal lin nas its guidance quran's purpose is guidance quran is nothing but a book of guidance hudal lin nas guidance for nas guidance for muttaqin 
guidance for Mohsineen, different levels of guidance which are present, which is specifically for guidance. Hmm. Now, what is this guidance? What does Quran wants to achieve over here? Quran with this guidance in very simple words wants us to do our journey of perfection, our journey of creation, which is our purpose of creation, which is seeking the nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quran is that catalog, that manifesto, which is telling us to reach, how do you reach near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. And this is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like you recite in this dua of Ramazan every day, which ya Leo, ya Azim, you say, Mannu means this is a favor, an ahsan, a favor mm -hmm. from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given this month to us. Otherwise, we were living our life, we were practicing Islam the way we want, but all of a sudden Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accelerated our journey by providing an environment mm -hmm. in which I can speed up my journey of perfection, my journey of achieving qurbat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. And that can only be done with the Quran. If someone doesn't come near the Quran in this month, fine, then as Amir al muminin says that fasting only gives him hunger, nothing else. Mm. He's not going to get anything. Now, what is the right approach to the Quran during this, specifically during this month? Because many people uh, take this guidance from the Quran and I guess misinterpret it when it comes to coming closer to the Quran. What they do is they try to uh, complete the recitation yeah. uh, as many times as possible. Is this the right uh, is, it, is this what Allah wants of us in terms of gaining that guidance? No, it is very clear. The Quran, not in one place, but several places it says, Hodal linnas, mm. it's guidance. Guidance is not something which, which you are going to just recite it. Like for example, you are going to some other country, say France. You don't know French. You took a ca car over there and they have given you a map which is written right. in French, which is written in French. What help it? You start reciting it. Fine, you're reciting it. What is it going to help you? Will you reach your destination? You will not reach your destination. Right, right. And Quran's guidance is so specific and so precise that Quran is not just telling you this is your start, this is your end and you have to reach there. This is one very basic guidance. Hmm. Quran is holding your hand and wants you to do this journey. If with that much precision Quran is presenting guidance, then it is very common sense that we have to take that guidance from the Holy Quran. Like there is a hadith from Imam Hassan which, re which replies your question very precisely. He says that the closest person to the Quran or the one who has delivered the rights of Quran, the one who has delivered the rights of the Quran is the one who acts upon it even though he has not memorized the Quran. Hmm. And the farthest person from the Quran is the one who does not act upon it even if he, have, if he has memorized the Quran and reciting it very often. Mm -hmm. So very clear discrimination is there over here that if you keep on reciting without understanding, mm -hmm. then you are not even near to the Quran. Forget about the mafhum, the message and the essence of the Quran. You are not even near to the Quran itself, the comprehensiveness of guidance which is there, you are not even there itself. So we need to put into practice exactly. everything that we, that we read. Yes. So is there, a, is there uh, for the benefit of the viewer, is there a suggested pace that one should follow or what, what should be the right approach? Let's say someone who is now wanting to come close yeah. and knows how to read the Arabic, reads the translation, what, okay. what is the a simple approach for, for them? There are three steps I would say for uh, doing this journey towards the Quran. Mm. Forget about the skills which is recitation and all those things. We assume that people know how to recite and right. things are there at their disposal. The first level, if you do not cross the first level and go to the second level of understanding, either you will understand very little or you might misunderstand things mm. or you might deviate. As the Quran itself says, the same verse when it is revealed, it creates more kufr and shirk in the hearts of those, of others. Whereas mm. for some it is guidance, for some it is misguidance. Right, yes. Because what happens, you know, as a common thing with human being, like if I have some running topic going on in my mind or some issue going on with me, I would moment that word or something related to that comes in the Quran, my misdaq, my reference becomes that. Like when Quran talks yeah, about Zalimin, yes. the first Zalim which comes in my mind is the one who has usurped my rights, mm -hmm. who has done something for me. Now these are the barriers yes. in understanding the Quran. These barriers can be only overcome if we go through these levels. The mm -hmm. first level is recognition of Quran. Shanaqt-e-Quran. What is Quran? Unless I know what is Quran, 
I will not be able to understand the Quran. Mm -hmm. It's like you take a good book. The first chapter of the book is the preface, the prologue, which tells you about the author, mm -hmm. who is the author, what field he specializes in, why he has written this book, what is the purpose of this book, what he wants to achieve from this book. That is what is the recognition of the Quran. It is the map which the Quran itself is presenting. The beauty is that the Quran itself is recognizing. Mm -hmm. You don't need to find external sources to recognize the Quran. First level is this, to recognize what Quran is. And very simple because we don't, we don't have much time over here. Very simple, if you want to understand or want to recognize Quran, Quran is a book of guidance. This should be our tasbi. That this is nothing else. This is not a book of sawab. Fine, you will get sawab. This is not a book of istikhara. Mm -hmm. Fine, you do with that. This is not a book of uh, getting jannat. Or this is not a book of uh, making taweez or amulets out of it. No, mm -hmm. this is a book of guidance. Okay, and so. Quran never ever has even said that by reciting Quran, you will get these things. Mm -hmm. Even Quran is, there is no controversy in this at all. Right. That Quran is over here has said that this is a book of sawab. No. Quran explicitly says guidance, guidance, mm -hmm. guidance, which means you have to take guidance. This is the basic recognition of Quran which a person can have that this is a book of, when I'm opening Quran, I'm opening a book of guidance. Guidance for whom? For me. Mm -hmm. It's not for any other creation other than me, myself. Mm -hmm. Then comes the next level of fahm quran understanding of the Quran. And to understand the Quran in between recognition and fahm, there is one more level which is adab e fahm quran the etiquettes of understanding Quran. Hmm. You have to comply with certain principles of understanding Quran. It's not just about language and translation, what you're reading. Translations hmm. are at times very highly misleading. We need to understand, we need to be familiar with the etiquettes of the Quran. If you're familiar with the etiquettes of the Quran, there are many things which you can pick from the translation itself, it's that it is not correct. It's, hmm. it's the Quran's message is not this, the way it has been uh, translated over here. Right, yes. So when you go through this level, then you really you go into a point where you start to really get the actual benefits out of the Quran. And one of the benefits which the Quran in this verse itself talks about is that Quran talks about Quran has got like more than some scholars narrate around 43 names of Quran is there in the Quran itself. Mm, as in attributes. Attributes. These are not attributes. Names. Attributes are different. Okay. These are titles of the Quran. Okay. And every title is one dimension of guidance of Quran. Mm -hmm. Quran itself is guidance. Every title points at one dimension. It's like a cube. If you take it, it has got six dimensions. It's a cube. Right. You look from here, there is one dimension, another dimension, third dimension, fourth dimension. Mm -hmm. Like this, these are all dimensions of, of guidance. Everything comes down to guidance only. Mm -hmm. But guidance in different forms, different, you can say various attributes of guidance, which are also associated with these uh, titles itself. Right. Whereas Quran specifically in this verse, when it talks about Ramazan and the dissension of Quran, it is referring to one is Bayyanat. Bayyanat means absolutely non-arguable, clear, distinct proof. Mm. Means the guidance in the book is, you cannot argue with it. It's so crystal clear means you don't even need to do a tafsir. Tafsir facilitates you. But if you really meet the criteria of understanding Quran, the Quran will, is doing its tafsir itself. It's it is so distinct, it is so clear. It's yes. self-explanatory. Because it is for nas. Unfortunately, we in the month of Ramadan recite Quran more after fasting. We feel tired. But the major benefit of Quran, the major mm. understanding of Quran comes during, during fasting. Right. Specifically towards the evening when you are really exhausted mm -hmm. and that is the time the mind is really fresh. Mm -hmm. Your body is fatigued but the mind is fresh and you can understand the Quran mm -hmm. much, much better. Hence in this month, the beginning of the month, the first day of the month, we should pledge you know, to go forward, go beyond recitations and start to do this journey of understanding the Quran. And first we should try to recognize what Quran is and then start to do this journey, inshallah. Inshallah. Let us take a break and uh, we'll be back after a few messages, inshallah.
Assalamu alaikum dear viewers and welcome back to the show Reflections. Today we're discussing verse number 185 of Surah Al-Baqarah which is the uh, verse about the month of Ramadan and the revelation of the Quran. Prior to the break uh, Sayyid Arif has been elaborating on the on the on the role of the Quran in this in this month and how it has been given the highest priority over fasting over anything else and the uh, need and necessity to to understand it as best as we can as well as the the reason for fasting and it being a a uh, a state in which one can approach the Quran uh, in a in a deeper and a better level um, Said Arif, what is the reason for the whole Ummah in, in engaging in this process of fasting? We have, as we speak, uh, millions of Muslims who are all engaging in this religiously, enthusiastically uh, in, in this month of fasting. And this is the, the vision of Islam at play. Uh, why, why is it such a collective effort and what is the desired outcome? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First of all, why the Ummah is engaging in a collective manner? Again, it's an individual approach only. Though Islam is uh, giving a collective face to it, mm -hmm. there is an element of, uh, of social side in this, of socialization in this as well, definitely. Mm -hmm. Because the way charity has been prescribed as one of the other essential acts in this month, mm -hmm. which, is self -talks, which is self takes us towards the social side of the Islam. Now, because the merits of fasting and the merits of this month has been presented, has been, is available in both Shia and Sunni narrations are so high mm. that many people are attracted towards this month specifically for the merits and merits related to istighfar, forgiveness of sin. So if you see there are many people who don't even do salat throughout the year but mm. would be fasting and praying uh, in this month because they believe that at least there is some hope that I would get forgiven because of uh, this month of mercy which is there from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one of the motivator and the inspiration which is there in this month. And the mm -hmm. philosophy of sawab and the philosophy of merits lies in this only to attract people more and more towards the important acts of Islam. So maybe it would become a means of guidance for them. Mm -hmm. And they might come near with this hope and eventually they go back as changed person. It has happened. Many people have changed because of the mercy of this month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. So that is definitely... Uh, and it looks like a collective thing. Salat, prayers, congregation, everything is happening in a collective manner. Mm -hmm. And there's an element of socialization over here and charity has been prescribed. But as I was talking in the previous session, let me just emphasize on that and that will link to this answer. Sure. The Quran has got like so many titles which are, uh, which are there mm -hmm. associated with the Quran and these are all dimensions of guidance. And in this verse, apart from Bayyanat, Quran is presenting a very critical and a very important uh, dimension of it, which is Furqan. Furqan has occurred many times in the Quran. There is a complete surah, which is Surah Furqan. And Quran says that one of the gifts of Quran when you achieve taqwa, piety, is Furqan. I think it's in Surah Yunus. I don't remember the exact surah, but it is there that the gift which is there, which, which Allah gives you as the result of taqwa is furqan. Furqan means what? Furqan means farq, which means a separation between two things. And it is specifically used for right and wrong, not materialistic things. Separation of haq and batil. Furqan is the criteria, it's the ability by which you can separate haq and batil, mm -hmm. the right and wrong. As Amir al muminin also says in the Quran also says the same thing. The major difficulty for human being in his journey of perfection lies in identifying haq and batil. Because haq and batil are not presented that this is haq and this is truth, right. though it is there. But many a times and most of the times haq is having, batil is wearing the garb of haq and coming out as haq. Mm. And even haq is also given the garb of batil and it is shown as batil where people don't mm. come near it. Like, the Kufars would say that this prophet is a magician. They were trying to present him as Batil so that people cannot come right, near, yes. near to him. Similarly, Batil, which is Amir al muminin is the biggest victim of this. Mm -hmm. And he uh, mourned on this itself, that Batil, which was the Khawarij, 
and the other companions also at that time who came in confrontation mm -hmm. they have put on the attire of haq and people could not discriminate right at the time when the battle is going on someone comes and ask amir al mu'minin are you on haq or are they on haq they couldn't see they couldn't discriminate why because furqan was not there lack of furqan is the biggest problem which humanity is facing today specifically believers and quran says i am the book of furqan furqan means guidance to mm. guide you what is right and what is wrong to specifically when haq and batil are mixed up when haq and batil are adulterated how do you separate them what is the scale which you have to separate them what is the equipment which you have by which you can separate them that is furqan now furqan is not something like an inner mystical power which you get to separate no it is a misunderstanding if someone thinks that i will get a mystical power of furqan and i will be able to say this is right and this is wrong no it's a god gifted level which you achieve achieve from the understanding of quran mm. quran itself is separating what is haq and batil at various occasions various principles it is presenting about haq and about batil signs mm. of identifying haq and batil and when you acquire the marifat of that you get furqan inside you and when you get furqan you can separate right and wrong haq and batil and the major problem when we come out from the individual level to the social level the problem which aggravates is this haq and batil at an individual level that is not an issue at an individual level you know what is right what is wrong but when it comes to social level you are subjugated you are pragmatic you have various reasons by which you do not follow haq mm. and at times you are misled you don't know like today many people who are misguided are not misguided because of infidelity or kufr which they have in their heart is because of this reason that they cannot separate between haq and batil right, yeah. if you look at again the khawarij there were very few who were fitna hmm. majority were blindly following the others they couldn't separate between haq and batil they were not all like evil minded people hmm. there were few who led them to follow this particular path and this is what comes out from furqan the quran says in this month of ramzan acquire piety come closer to allah subhanahu wa taala take guidance from the quran and this dimension of guidance furqan is what is going to come to you in this particular month right. where you will be able to separate between haq what is haq and what is batil over here if you look at the political situation today majority of the muslims are following batil when it comes to socio political domain right. they are followers of batil they have submitted to the west they have submitted to the imperialism though they are reciting quran and there are millions of quran distributed by these countries across the world hmm. specifically during hajj but on the other hand you see they are followers of batil of why batil, yeah. fine we can understand of elite class or the kings which are doing it but what about the majority of the masses hmm. they are lacking furqan which is discriminating between haq and batil over here and once you get this then really you come up in the social side of this particular month where you can separate and see what is haq and what is batil which group is leading me towards haq and which group is leading me towards batil where haq stands and where batil stands what is it within the the quran that develops that sense of uh, of right black and white what we are talking about is yes. is the separating what is really right from what is really wrong and removing the gray areas that is what, what are the verses uh, of the quran how how is the quran doing this through the uh, the the stories of the of the prophets or okay. other separate messages or how does it do this? yes the quran is doing in certain places by presenting principles hmm. in form of parables the parables are really ex, uh, presenting what is haq and what is uh, right. batil and also protecting human being from being misguided on understanding what is haq and uh, what is batil then the stories of the prophet the qisas al quran which are there this is these are nothing majority of the stories which you see in the quran are confrontation between haq and batil right yeah. and those stories are narrated more by the quran like the story of prophet musa then prophet ibrahim mm -hmm. this is all haq and batil struggle right. between haq and batil and these stories are presenting the principles of haq and batil like if you take the case of talut and jalut the story very clearly says and at the end quran concludes it hmm. that a minority succeeds over majority by iznillah hmm. so if you are with allah then even if you are in minority you should not be deceived that if this is majority they are haq if this is minority they are right, yes. they are batil in the same story of talut and jalut the quran presents a category of mala the elite class the rich people the wealthy people who oppose the leadership 
of a person appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as their leader. Right. This is the criteria. This is, the, this is what Furqan is. And this, this is what is the guidance which the Quran is giving. That the mal'a, the elite class, is not the class which you can consider because of the materialistic strength that they are superior. They are the one who would be opposing the truth as the foremost. Right. So these are the principles which the Quran is presenting in these stories. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the individual acts of worship which are present in Quran, they are less than 10%. The ayahs which are related to absolutely to individual affairs. Right. Even less than 5%. Even those who are, those who, which looks like uh, mm -hmm. individualistic are also social in nature. Right. Like do zakat, spend in the way of Allah. It's an instruction to an individual. Mm -hmm. But again that carries a social dimension to it. But if you look at the other ayahs, like 90% of the Quran is talking about systems, about the confrontation, about mm -hmm. the struggles of the Prophet, about the social dimensions uh, of Islam. So mm -hmm. if a person, uh, you can say if a person reserves this month specifically as an individualistic month where he prefers to sleep inside his home only and mm -hmm. acquire taqwa and just read Quran and do these things and he is not concerned about the social affairs, then uh, this he is not getting the benefits of this particular month. Specifically, Allah has also said charity. Charity you cannot do sitting inside your home. Right. You have to go out to do charity, which means get connected to the people. Mm -hmm. You cannot uh, leave the people over here. Okay. Well, I am glad we discussed this aspect of the of the social responsibility that this month brings about, especially through the uh, through this aspect of the Quran. And it reminds me of uh, the prescription of Imam Khomeini rahmatullahi alayhi, who prescribed the last Friday of the holy month to be the, uh, the day of Quds, Yom al-Quds, uh, which is in uh, a day of solidarity of, for all the Muslim Ummah to come out and, and not, not necessarily protest but to voice their, their togetherness with the people of Palestine and against the the oppressors hmm. of uh, over them. Why is it that Imam Khomeini uh, did this? What is the, he, the philosophy behind this? Specifically doing it in the month at of the month. end of this month and not the beginning or in the middle. Yes. Imam Khomeini, mm -hmm. alayhi, as I was talking about Furqan, is one example of a personality whom Allah really gifted with this gift of Furqan. Mm -hmm. The ability which he had to separate Haqq and Batil was phenomenal. When there were times in, during the Islamic revolution before and after that there were occasions where even his nearest friends, scholars were confused in certain areas, Imam would come out and give a decision which they would see that yes this is the correct decision. So that is the power which Imam had about mm -hmm. separating Haqq and Batil over here. And Imam Rahmatullah Alai always as he said also Deen Aina Siyasat has means religion is nothing but politics. He says even that even when you do wazu, it's a political affair. It's not an individual affair. He goes to that particular level. Mm -hmm. As per Imam, this is the statement of Atullah Mudarasi, which he which he always recited and uh, repeated that Dinayna Siyasatas, that religion is all politics. For a person with that kind of vision, now the point is again the same point. Where did Imam Rahmatullah Allah develop this vision? before addressing this question of why Yom al in this month. Hmm. Where has Imam developed the socio-political vision from of Islam? From the same Quran. The same Quran is read by many others and the same Quran when it is read by Imam Khomeini he brings a revolution because hmm. Quran is a book of revolution. Right. Imam, could, Imam was able to discriminate these things from the Quran. He got the comprehensiveness from the Quran which others could not get. Hmm. He got this vision from the Quran. And why, why is it that so many other billions of people and scholars were not able to pick up on this comprehensiveness? Yes, there are, there are various reasons for them. There are various reasons. Like even if you look at the time of the prophets, how many would come near the prophets? When the prophets were delivering the message themselves. Right. Let's leave the prophet, let's come to prophet messengers from holy prophets time. Mm -hmm. There were so many companions for 10 years the ayahs were coming in Medina. The verses were revealed directly and it were revealed and directly they were getting from the Holy Prophet. Mm. The best of the teacher was their teacher of Islam. It was the best of their teacher. But still, they went astray. Many went against him afterwards. It Western happened. Him. Right. 
it happened because of there are certain internal problems which human being has and that's what answers the question about Yom Al-Quds in this month. Mm -hmm. This is the month of purification. This is the month of getting recognition of Quran, Marifat of Quran. When you purify yourself, which means you have fought against the internal devil, mm. the shaitan which is inside yourself. And if you have successfully overcome the shaitan inside yourself, then come out and at least give a small proof that you have done it. Now come out and encounter and do the jihad e asgar mm -hmm. If you have done jihad e akbar, right. you have done the greatest of jihad. The greatest of jihad with the Prophet says is jihad bil nafs. Mm -hmm. So you have fought with the nafs. You have remained hungry for 30 days in a month. Now come out and do jihad e asgar mm -hmm. This should be more easier for you. This is what Imam is telling you. You have done jihad e akbar. Now you have to do jihad e asgar You have fought with the internal shaitan. Right. Fight with the external shaitan. Who is the external shaitan in this month? Or at this particular era, it's Israel who has mm -hmm. occupied the who has occupied Baitul Muqaddas. What is Baitul Muqaddas? Baitul Muqaddas is a symbol of the efforts of the prophets. So, what have you been reading in the Quran throughout the month? Mm -hmm. The efforts of the prophet. You have been reciting Surah Maryam for what in this month of Quran? Right. You have seen where Maryam got inspired. Where was the inspiration coming from? Baitul Muqaddas. Where did the Holy Prophet was taken for Miraj? Baitul Muqaddas. Baitul Muqaddas was the first Qibla of the, of the Muslims. It was the first Qibla. Right. It carries such a significance and it is now under an illegal occupation by the Tawood, by the Shaitan of this era. So fine, you have done jihad e akbar Come and show if you can do jihad e asgar mm. According to Imam's fatwa, it is wajib. It is not an option that you should do this. Yom al Qud is, is mandatory. Mm. If you are not able to fight, do jihad e asgar then you have really not done jihad e akbar Still, there is a shaitan which is lying inside yourself, which is stopping you from coming out. Right. That could be the shaitan of fear, love of world, giving away things which might come in my way if I come out, pictures yeah. are taken, it flashes, oh, such a big businessman is out and raising, telling debt to Israel and mm -hmm. debt to America. Tomorrow, his, all his contracts would be cut by the state. Mm -hmm. That is, so that idol, that both, that taghut is still lying inside myself. We have not overcome it then. Mm -hmm. Those who have overcome it, they would definitely come out and come out in the scorching heat, whatever it is. Like now here, the weather is good. But if you go to like Iran now, Specifically Tehran, it is like 18 hours of fasting and it's 40 degrees, 45 degrees, even like in some places it is 50 degrees. Mm. And you will see people will be out on your Quds in such heat. They are right. coming out for whom? Not for their self. I have done the fasting for myself. This is to show my resistance against the Tawood mm. that the Muslims are alive. We are not going to, we are not accepting the existence of Israel, the accept, we are not accepting this illegal occupation of Baitul Muqaddas and we are struggling in whichever form and whichever way possible for the freedom of Baitul Muqaddas. Hence, Yom Al Quds in the vision of Imam is an essential part of Ramadan. It is the Furqan. If you have really acquired the message from the Quran, then come and show what is Haq and what is Batil. Come and declare your disassociation with Batil. Do that. If someone doesn't does it, then he is not even he has not even understand this verse of Ramzan, the title verse of Ramzan. He has not got the Furqan. Mm -hmm. He has not got the Hidayat which is there in the Quran. What Quran is telling, come out, Masna wa Furada, come out, come out and stand against the Taghut over here. Hence, that is was clearly the vision and you can say the deep thoughts of Imam Khomeini Rahmatullah Alayh, where he wanted to capitalize on the purified state of the Muslim Ummah. It is, you cannot get a, a state better than this state. That too on Jummatul Vida, the last Friday where people are all in the mosque. Mm -hmm. So Imam has accomplished all the hujjat that you don't have to plan. Because Jummatul Vida has got very special merits associated with it to attend that Friday prayer. Right, so yes. you come in the Friday prayer, Imam at Juma has to deliver his rights, charge you, inspire you, make you familiar with the external issues mm -hmm. and now if you are breaking the idols one step you are out of the mosque on the street expressing your disassociation against the Taghut. That is how Imam Tadbir was, how he planned it that only purified Muslims should come out. It's only the purified people, the Mutahroon who can give freedom and salvation to Islam over here. So those who are purified should be out on the street on this day. Okay, with that said Arif, I thank you very much uh, for your uh, sharing your wisdom. And uh, we hope to have you very soon to further elaborate on other verses uh, or hadith, inshallah. 
And inshallah we can all uh, take the opportunity of this month to come closer to the Holy Quran, to fulfill the requirements as desired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, reach a higher level of, of uh, perfection or seek closeness, uh, nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you once again for joining us. Uh, Thanks today. a lot. Thanks. And uh, for the viewers for watching the show, and we hope to see you soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.